If you go into the preferences menu, you'll see that there are actually a lot of different preferences that can be set. Now, a lot of these are beyond the scope of this course, but some of the interesting ones you will need to know about are, firstly, you can change the appearance if you like. There are appearance presets, so you can change the color scheme if, uh, if you find this a bit heavy on your eyes. The audio hardware section is very important because this tells you how to get sound in and out. So you can see there are different sound sources and different sound destinations available. You can also set a buffer size if you're doing lots of recording and you can set a sample rate for the audio that you record. Auto save is quite important because obviously if you're working on something you don't want to lose your work so you can set it to auto save at an interval that you specify. You can choose to back up your multitrack sessions automatically if you like. This is good for making sure nothing ever goes horribly wrong. The memory section here is kind of academic. It used to be the case that you would want to manually assign different amounts of memory to different applications. That's not the case anymore. Basically, you can leave Audition to manage this for itself. In the disk cache here, when it renders files and you render things down, it keeps copies of things in its cache. And that's just so you don't have to keep re-rendering everything. Uh, you can set the cache manually here if you like. You can also choose to uh, clear out the cache because render files can start to take up a lot of space on your hard drive. If you are doing a lot of recording, there's an audio channel mapping option here and you can tell it where to map the different channels. So here are the inputs available and the mix buses available on my interface. I'm keeping it quite simple as it happens, but you can route audio in and out if you have lots of different channels on your interface. You can see also here that it is quite capable of surround sound. We're not going to get into that, but it's worth knowing if you're having trouble mapping your audio ins and outs, this is the place to look to check that it's all working properly. So next, let's look at recording or importing an audio file. 